Well, hello and welcome to SEC Online. It's great that you're able to join with us. Some of you I know will be watching at 10.30 on Sunday morning in the building and perhaps others will be watching at home at the same time. But whether you're watching it then or throughout the week, it's just lovely that you're able to join with us. So I wonder, how are you feeling? Is hope rising? Life in our country seems to be changing a little bit, doesn't it, as we start to experience a gradual unwinding of lockdown. The rules have been changed and we have a little bit more freedom. And this is playing out in our church as well, isn't it? The services opened up again a few weeks ago and we had that lovely time outside in the garden on Easter Sunday celebrating the risen Lord Jesus with such lovely weather as well. And then two weeks ago, the baby group started on a Friday morning and last Friday, toddlers opened up as well. So is, there is a sense of beginning to get back to some sense of normality, whatever that might look like in the future. But I wonder, where is our hope? Where is our hope placed? Of course, the vaccine is making a big difference to us and the reduction in the impact of the virus is having a huge impact on our lives. But where is our hope? A couple of weeks ago, Andy launched a new teaching series for us as we look at uh, how we might grow as Christians. We've been basing it around this book, which I know some people have already found very helpful. You Can Really Grow by John Hindley. Now today, our topic is Bible reading. How do we read the Bible? And the writer sets out quite plainly how he found his Bible reading uh, quite dry, quite dusty, and he was really struggling with it. But he made some discoveries. And I would just like to read a little bit to you because I think this is so helpful. He says that he is struggling and then he starts off on this is page 55. For those of you who might be reading the book, don't get me wrong. The Bible can help me understanding behaviour, decisions and feelings. And it is true, but it's not about me and it is not merely truth. That's what I was getting wrong. In fact, the Bible is about Jesus. You probably knew that already, but do you read the Bible as if you know that? When we do, it changes everything. In Jesus, we see truth and beauty. We see the most wonderful life you can imagine, lived on the canvas of history rather than a novel. And then skipping on another page. To grasp that the Bible is about Jesus is to re-understand its subject, like realising that Treasure Island is a book about pirates when you first thought it was a manual on ship handling techniques and rigging. But seeing that the Bible is about Jesus is far more than this. It is not to see the Bible as having a different subject, but to change the nature of Bible reading from information to relation, from growing in knowledge to growing in love. <clears throat> that is what Paul is getting at when he tells us, and then he has a quote from Colossians 3 verse 16, which I'm sure you will recognise. Let the message of Christ dwell richly among you as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And he goes on writing, he doesn't expect the Bible simply to inform us, he expects it to dwell in us richly. This is a picture of Bible reading as a life transforming experience, not as an information exchange. He expects it, us, it to change us and for us to change others with it through admonishing and teaching. In other words, because he knew who the words of the Bible were and whom they were about, Paul knew what the Bible could do. He knew that there was a way to read the Bible that changes us greatly by reading it as a love letter from Christ. Doesn't that sound great? We discover the Lord Jesus. That is ultimately where we place our hope, not in a vaccination, 
not in the fact that the virus numbers are going down. Of course, those really matter and are really important to us, aren't they? But we place our hope in the Lord Jesus. And as we come to read the Bible, we discover more about him. Now, we're going to sing next. If you're in the building, maybe you'll like to stand up, although, of course, you can't sing. If you're home, perhaps you might like to stand up and sing. During this pandemic, we've discovered songs from City of Light, which is a church in Australia. So many lovely songs. And we're going to have one of them now. Yet not I, but Christ in me. And then after that, uh, hopefully you're going to come back again. And I'm going to read a short passage from uh, 2 Timothy. And then Andy is going to preach.
So our reading before Andy speaks is taken from 2 Timothy, <clears throat> well-known words from chapter 3, and I'm going to start reading at verse 14. And if you're following this in the church building and have a church Bible at handy, then it's on page 1197. So 2 Timothy 3, reading from verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and been, been convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And now the verse which is so well known. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Let's just pray before we hand over to Andy. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he is our hope. Thank you that we discover him in the pages of the Bible as the Old Testament points towards him and the New Testament reveals him. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, John wrote. And so we thank you that as we read the Bible, we can discover Jesus. Thank you that he is our hope. Thank you for all that is happening within our society and the changes with things starting to open up. Lord, help us to be wise and sensible in all that we do, that we might enjoy meeting together much more. Lord, we are so grateful. But help us to see so much that our hope is found in the Lord Jesus. And so help us, please, as we read the Bible and we discover him more that you would help us in the way that we live out our lives day by day. And so we're so grateful. Go with us now as we listen to Andy and his teaching. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> 